Okay, so let's go with the titles. There are several different styles of titles that you can choose. And I want to say there's no right or wrong title, but I think it's actually just nice to know what type of title you're doing and why you're doing that. So um, there's what I call the sexy and ambiguous title. This is my friend's uh, uh, paper, Dynamic Fragility of Coral Reefs. He has no idea what it means. Absolutely none. It doesn't mean anything, but it sounds awesome. And nobody knows what it means, so nobody can have a problem with it, right? Um, there's informative titles, right? Uh, which are mostly about conveying your most interesting or surprising result, right? This is a, a paper in Nature. Leadership, social capital, and incentives promote successful fisheries, right? Uh, yeah. But um, this is just saying what the result is. And this thing's really well cited in large part because nobody has to read the paper. They can find out that leadership's important and I love leadership, so I'm gonna cite this paper. Or social capital is the thing that I think is great, so I'm gonna cite this paper because it shows that it's important, right? So there are actually, you know, I mean, there's, there's good reasons for having these informative titles on there. Tell what your result is. Uh, and, and people, I, I, I think they tend to get cited quite well. Um, there's descriptive titles, and I tend to fall into this one probably more than I'd like. I tend to write what the study was about, so I did this one. A comparison of marine protected areas and alternative approaches to coral reef management. So that tells what I did in the study, but nothing about what I found. And you know, maybe it's, it would have been better to have uh, done the other one. There's what I call keyword lists, and um, my boss has, does this all the time, and these things have like 2,000 citations, so I can't say there's any problem with this. It would never have occurred to me to just write down three things, like uh, globalization, roving bandits, and marine resources. These are just three things that are in the paper, or climate change, human impacts, and the resilience of coral reefs. Again, these are like three really neat things. But I, I would have thought these should have been the key words, but they put it in the title, and who am I to argue with thousands of citations on that, right? It, it does way, an order of magnitude better than anything I've ever published, so, yeah. Uh, and then there's the ones that are like, having a laugh, right? And these are like, using puns or catchy titles, they're kind of funny. And so, um, I want to give an example of one that my friend did, which was, the, the new cod war of words. Cod is God versus sod the cod. Two opposed discourses on the North Sea recovery program. Does anyone know what sod means? I didn't know what it means. I honestly, I had to ask him. I was like, it sounds interesting. What did you mean by that? Yeah, it's an explicative. It means to do something we won't mention in this room. But, so this is really fun and really cute if you're from that part of England. And if you're not, nobody understands what you're talking about. And what's the probability of reading a paper that you don't know what it's about? For me, in a time-limited context, it's, it's zero. So what to do with the title? Choose widely. It's what most people will use to decide whether to read it or cite it. Uh, that person, that most people includes the editor, right? So we're gonna, you know, gonna take a lot of, if it's just this boring title, I'm probably not gonna read that much deeper into it. Um, look, there's no rules on which title is the right one, but there's actually people have researched this, right? And they say that amusing titles receive fewer citations. So I would say we're nerds, not comedians, and we might be funny looking or whatever, but we're not actually that funny, so let's just leave the jokes to the comedians. Um, articles with question marks tend to be less cited, um, and the influence of colons and commas is inconsistent between studies. Um, I would say that having a, a, a colon study is probably way more common in, in the social sciences. I tend to use them. I kind of, I kind of like them. I have like one title and then a, you know, I think it's cool, but uh, you know, they actually get cited less. Um, and titles with locations tend to get cited less. And that makes sense too, right? Because if you're not interested in Northeastern Bahol in the Philippines, you probably aren't gonna actually read the paper, right? Now there's a delicate balance between whether you should put it in or not, 
So the next bit, we've done the, the titles, and the next bit is the abstract. And in some senses, this is the most important part of the paper because it's what most people will read, and including the editor, right? That may be all they read. I know that if, this is as far as I need to read in some cases to know that this paper is not going to make it out to review, right? I will go through the rest of it, but I probably made the decision by here that if this is really poorly written and there's no result and they haven't explained anything, it's not likely to do well in peer review in the journals that I'm an editor for. So I pretty much, you know, I've, got, I've in some sense made a decision by the time I've reached these 300 words. So it's a really important part of, uh, uh, of the process. You're meant to distill the essence of the message. Don't use vague language like we will discuss. Tell me what you're, you've actually done or what you will do. Vague things aren't helpful here. You've got 300 words to convince someone why this is really the most important thing they've ever read. Um, you need to condense your findings and not re repeat material <coughs> word for word. What I often see is people like the way they'd written a sentence and then just cut and pasted that in there. Journal space is extremely limited and there is zero space for repetition. You can't say the same sentence twice when there's such competition for space. So you have to say it in a, in a better, more condensed way. So, you know, just I mentioned I work for, I, I, I edit for conservation biology, so I use that as an example a lot of times. Um, they expect the abstracts to be a sort of mini version of the manuscript. Right? They actually, they, you know, you've got all of the elements of the manuscript uh, in there. Um, and, well, here's an interesting con controversial part. Um, I always say do it last. To me, it's the last thing I do. I was giving this uh, talk in conjunction with Neil Adger, who's like a total hero of mine, who's probably the most influential human geographer on the planet. And he said, huh, I do it first <laughs> when we were giving this joint talk. He actually does the abstract first thing he does, and he's got the whole thing laid out, and that helps him structure it. For me, I do it last because I want to wait until everything, all the insights that I've figured out go in there. So there isn't a right or wrong answer in there. I'm certainly not going to argue with Neil Adger about publishing, right? Like, he's a legend in that. Um, but for me, it's helpful to do it last. It's the last thing that I do uh, in this, in, that, in the sense that I know the question, I know all of these different parts to it, and I know how it all fits together. So for me, it's really easy to write the condensed version of it after I know the longer version of it. Okay, so what are the different parts of an abstract? I want to uh, do it by going through one of the papers that I, I, I did a few years back. Um, and so we'll just sort of zoom into that, uh, that bit there. Uh, so the first part is really the background. This is just sort of, you know, the stuff that you sort of need to know to understand the rest of it. Coral reefs support the livelihoods of millions of people, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's a problem statement. In this case, there's, it's, uh, uh, it's two sentences, right? Uh, coral reefs are highly vulnerable to climate change and new stresses, blah, blah, blah. And uh, uh, such climate change impacts have the potential to lead to declines in marine fish production and compromise the livelihoods of fisheries dependent communities, right? So that's actually, that's what the problem is, right? There's what we do about it. Few studies have examined this. It's kind of the, the, the gap there. Uh, I'm sorry, that, that was the gap. The next bit's what we do about it. And then there's the most interesting and the important results. There's not space to do everything that's in the paper. So what's really, really important that somebody really needs to read this paper about? So uh, we do that, and then we talk about what it all means. Yeah, look, some journals are different, and, and that actually leads perfectly into the next slide, which is about different ways that journals have you organize the abstracts. A lot of times, though, all of the key elements are still there. They just organize it a little bit differently, right? So for example, in this one here, uh, journal Applied Ecology, they want you to do these different, you know, six sort of si sentences there, six sort of, uh, they're almost bullet points, really. And the last one's the synthesis and, and, and application there. So, but these still follow the same sort of patterns that, that I was talking about before. It's just a different format of, of doing it. They want each one read separately. Um, there's an interesting 
uh, trend in the sort of health uh, literature where they do it the background, objective, the methods. And this is interesting. Why do they do it this way? Well, so this field is dominated by meta-analyses, right? And so this is set up in a way that you could figure out if you were doing a meta-analysis, whether this fit your inclusion criteria, right? Semi-structured interviews, 73 men and women of this age living in their own homes in London and Norwich, right? That's really, really clear for someone doing that sort of meta-analysis, whether they could include these or not, right? Not all fields are like that, but this one, this one is. Um, this is from uh, sort of nature climate change. And theirs are quite different, right? Because you see theirs are fully referenced, right? In, in, in most abstracts, that's not where you start putting literature in. But for journals like Nature and, and, and Current Biology, that's actually the beginning of your paper. So at the beginning of the paper, you say your results, and then you get more deeply into the results. So it's a, a different sort of writing style there. So I, I saw this one online, and I thought it was a, a great way to do it. So it's how to construct nature summary paragraph. So the first bit is one or two sentences providing a basic introduction into the field. right? The second bit is two or three sentences of a more detailed background, comprehensible to scientists in related disciplines. So the first one is meant to be for anyone in the world. Any scientist should be able to get the first sentence. The next two are a little bit nerdier for your discipline, right? But then one sentence clearly stating the general problem. So this then should go back up to that higher level. Everyone should be able to understand what the problem is. One sentence summarizing the main result with the words, here we show, or their equivalent, right? Um, two or three sentences explaining what the main result reveals in direct comparison to what was thought to be the case previously or how the main result adds to previous knowledge. Cool. Uh, one or two sentences put these results into a more general context. So that's, again, sort of backing out one, one level. And then two or three sentences to provide a broader perspective, readily comprehensible to a scientist in any discipline. Right. So again, what this, is, this is a kind of interesting way to do it. This should be read by anyone, and this should be read by anyone. This middle bit's a little bit more specialized. That's a neat way to think about it, right? If somebody's scanning through, what can anyone read versus more specialized people? Anyway, this is the way that, uh, you know, uh, uh, nature has you do it. So I'll give you guys my recipe for doing an abstract. And it begins, you know, the background, well, maybe. Is the background really necessary? You know, sometimes it is. I showed you one where I did the background, but it's not always necessary. Sometimes you can get right into the problem statement in the first sentence, and that's going to be more powerful. So the second bit would be the problem statement. The third bit would be the gap. The fourth is what you'll do about it. Fifth is what your most interesting or controversial findings are. And then what it all means. Right? These are all the bits that should be in, uh, in an abstract.